DeepSeek is back, and this time they're claiming their new model can slash the cost of running long, complex tasks by half. OpenAI's Sora shot to number one on Apple's store in just two days, and Sam Altman is already planning to cash in. Mira Murati, former OpenAI CTO, has unveiled Tinker, the first product from her startup Thinking Machines, and researchers are calling it a breakthrough for fine-tuning AI models. IBM rolled out Granite 4.0, a model family built on a radical hybrid design that cuts memory use by more than 70% while still punching above its weight on benchmarks. And Hollywood announces a movie that will be directed not by a human, but by an AI entity. Several big moves just hit the AI world the mail of. So let's talk about it. So DeepSeek has been pretty quiet for a while. Earlier this year, they grabbed a lot of attention with their R1 model, which was trained mostly with reinforcement learning and cost way less than what American labs were spending. Some people thought that move was going to completely change how AI models are trained, but it didn't quite spark the revolution they were hoping for, and DeepSeek kind of faded from the spotlight. Now though, they're back and this time with something completely different. They just dropped an experimental model called V3.2X. And the big selling point is this, it can cut the cost of running long complex tasks by as much as half. That's huge. But here's how they're pulling it off. They came up with a system they call sparse attention. Sounds technical, but the idea is actually pretty simple. Normally, when an AI model tries to process a big chunk of text, it wastes energy looking at every single piece, even the boring or irrelevant parts. What DeepSeek's model does is way smarter. It uses a component they call a lightning indexer to quickly scan through the massive wall of text and pull out only the most important sections. Then another layer, which they named the fine-grained token selection system, zooms in even further and picks out the key details within those sections. So instead of wasting time and money processing everything, the model focuses only on what really matters. That double filter system is what makes the magic happen. And DeepSeek's early tests showed that simple API calls, which usually get really expensive when you're dealing with long context windows, ended up costing up to 50% less. And the best part is, it's open, available on Hugging Face with a full paper on GitHub so the community can test it right away and see if those cost savings really hold up. Because here's the thing, training these massive AI models gets all the headlines. But what really eats money is running them every single day, especially now that context windows are getting ridiculously huge. That's where companies burn through cash the fastest DeepSeek is basically showing everyone that even the good old transformer architecture, which we thought was already maxed out, still has some untapped tricks that can make it run a lot leaner. And if this approach sticks, it could be a game changer for anyone trying to scale AI without draining their budget. Now on the other side of the AI world, OpenAI has been on a very different track, apps and user adoption. And the star of the show right now is Sora, their AI video creation app. The thing just hit number one on the US App Store, which is crazy considering it launched invite only and only in the US and Canada. Still, it managed 56,000 downloads on day one and 164,000 installs in its first two days. To put that in perspective, that debut outpaced launches from Anthropic's Claude, Microsoft's Copilot, and even OpenAI's own ChatGPT app. Sam Altman jumped in with an update, calling it Sora update number one, and laid out some of the company's next steps. First up, monetization. They're going to start charging for it, but not in the way you might expect. Altman says they want to set up a revenue sharing system with right holders. Basically, if someone uses a copyrighted character or likeness, those right holders would get paid out. On top of that, they're building more granular control tools, so right holders can decide how their characters can or cannot be generated Going beyond the current opt-in model, OpenAI already runs for likeness rights. Altman framed it as interactive fan fiction, saying a lot of rights holders are actually excited, seeing it as a new way to engage audiences and even make money. The bigger challenge, of course, is that people are generating way more video content than OpenAI expected, much of it for small audiences. That means serving costs are ballooning. 
The revenue sharing idea is partly about covering those costs, but also about incentivizing content creation instead of just putting a hard cap on usage. Altman did say the final model will take trial and error to nail down, but the push is clear. They want Sora to be compelling enough that adoption spreads quickly, even under a paid model. Over in the startup world, Mira Murati, who you probably know as the former CTO of OpenAI, has officially stepped out with her own company, Thinking Machines. And their very first product is here. It's called Tinker, and it's designed to make fine-tuning large language models way easier while still giving researchers serious control. The best way to think of it is this. Tinker isn't some drag and drop tool where you throw in data and cross your fingers. It's developer grade, Python based, and it gives you granular control over everything. Training loops, loss functions, data pipelines, all the actual compute happens on Thinking Machines infrastructure so you don't have to wrestle with GPUs or multi-node orchestration. As Andre Karpapi put it, you keep 90% of the algorithmic control while ditching 90% of the infrastructure pain. And people are already putting it to work. Princeton's Godel team used Tinker with Laura to fine tune theorem proving models and hit 88.1% pass at 32 on Mini F2F, jumping to 90.4 with self correction. That's as good as full parameter fine tuning with far less data. At Stanford, the Rotskoff lab trained chemical reasoning models on top of Llama 70B boosting accuracy on IUPAC to formula conversion from 15% to 50%. For Berkeley's Sky RL group, Tinker made complex multi-agent reinforcement learning loops actually doable, and Redwood Research used it to train Quen 332B on long context AI control tasks, something Eric Gann said he wouldn't have even attempted without Tinker. The endorsements are piling up. John Schulman called it the infrastructure I've always wanted. Karpathy praised the design. Even the Ray co-founders said combining it with distributed frameworks could unlock huge scale. Tinker's in private beta right now, free to use, but usage-based pricing is coming. With $2 billion in funding from A16Z, NVIDIA, and Excel, Thinking Machines clearly wants to become a serious player, and Marathi is framing it as an open, safe, adaptable alternative to the closed ecosystem she left behind. So now let's talk about IBM, because they've just unveiled Granite 4.0, a new family of open AI models with a pretty big twist. Instead of using only the standard transformer setup that powers most AI today, they mixed in a newer design called Mamba 2. The balance is nine parts Mamba to one part Transformer, and that change alone slashes memory use by more than 70%. In plain English, companies can run the same heavy tasks with way fewer expensive GPUs, which directly means saving a lot of money. Granite 4.0 comes in four versions. The biggest one has 32 billion parameters overall, but only about 9 billion are active at once, making it lighter to run. Then there's a 7 billion version that activates around 1 billion plus two smaller 3 billion models, one hybrid, one fully transformer for systems not ready for the hybrid setup. Each one also comes in a general use version and an instruction following version. They trained these models on massive text windows, half a million tokens, and tested them up to 128,000. So they're built to handle really big workloads without falling apart. The performance checks look solid too. The mid-sized granite is beating most other open models on reasoning tests, only falling behind much larger systems like Llama 4 Maverick. And it's holding its own on function calling benchmarks while being far cheaper to run. On top of that, IBM is stressing trust. Granite 4.0 is the first open model family with official ISO certification for AI management, and every release is cryptographically signed. Access is wide too. You can grab them on Hugging Face, Kaggle, Docker Hub, Replicate, WatsonX.ai, and plenty more. So overall, IBM has delivered a lean but powerful set of models that cut memory costs massively while still keeping performance high. Exactly what enterprises want. And finally, let's talk about Hollywood. Italian producer Andrea Iervolino just announced what he claims will be the first film directed entirely by an AI. 
The movie is called The Sweet Idleness, and the director is an AI entity dubbed Felon AI. Ayer Volino will act as the human in the loop, supervising the project. The film's story matches the theme. It's set in a future of abundance, where work is nothing more than ritual. The trailer already dropped, and it looks fully AI generated with no human actors in sight. That makes sense, since Ayer Volino recently introduced an AI actor called Tilly Norwood, which stirred up a storm. Emily Blunt called the idea terrifying, saying it kills human connection, while Whoopi Goldberg argued it's unfair to pit actors against something trained on the work of thousands of professionals. The Screen Actors Guild even declared Norwood isn't an actor at all, just a computer creation. But here's the thing. If actors really believe AI performances will be trash and audiences won't connect to them, why are they so afraid? If they were sure AI couldn't outperform them, they'd just ignore it. The pushback itself shows they see it as a threat, which makes this even more interesting. Social media slammed the project as garbage, stars are denouncing it, agencies are uneasy, and audiences remain skeptical. Ayer Valino insists he isn't trying to replace cinema, but open a new chapter, and with credits like Ferrari starring Adam Driver and To the Bone with Lily Collins and Keanu Reeves, he's not exactly a lightweight. Still, whether Hollywood or the public is ready to accept a film directed entirely by AI is another story. So yeah, that's where we're at. This space doesn't slow down. Thanks for sticking around. Catch you in the next one.